Java Loop Challenge 2. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you're coming from, if you're not coming from Loop Challenge 1, I'm not in my normal recording environment, so you might hear some background noise. I'm actually sitting here looking out at some very lovely sakura. So let's take a look at Java Loop Challenge 2. Uh, yeah, so we're basically using some for loops, and we're going to be doing some stuff with, uh, yeah, with looping. So let's take a look here. So number one says create a loop to print the numbers 1 to 10 inclusive. Now, I should have added here, what I want to do is I want to print the numbers horizontally, and I want to put a tab between the numbers. Right. So let's just work through this problem step by step. So it says create a loop to print the numbers 1 to 10 inclusive. So it means I'm starting at 1, I'm ending at 10. Inclusive means that I want to also print 10. I'm including 10 in that list. And although it doesn't really say it uh, explicitly, I want to print all the numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So 4. And I'm just going to use i because that's what I've been using in my other programs. I could This could be x. might make a little more sense in this case. I'm going to use i. Again, I'm starting at 1. And it says inclusive of 10. So it means while i is less than or equal to 10, or I could do less than 11. Doesn't matter which one I do, um, whichever makes more sense to you. Now, if you're here because you're an AP student or planning to be an AP student, this is one of those things that you'll see a lot on AP tests, and they like to confuse you with less than and less than or equal to. Thanks, that's very educational, I guess. Anyway, so we are incrementing by one. And I'm going to go ahead and put my closing brace in here just to get that in there. And again, uh, it doesn't show it here. It doesn't say it. it should say it. I want to print horizontally. So I'm going to do system system.out.print, and I'm going to print i. Now, this isn't quite correct, but let's go ahead and test it out. So I'm going to compile it. I'm using the genie uh, editor here, and I'm going to go ahead and execute it, and let's see what the result is. So we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So I know that part's working. The loop is correct. I started at 1, ended at 10, incremented by 1. I'm happy. But what I want to do is I want to also add a tab, as I mentioned earlier. But if you haven't done that before, let's just start with adding a space. Okay, so I'm going to compile it the space and now I've got a space between each of my numbers I could stop there I don't have to add a tab but adding a tab I think makes it look a little more graphically you know lined up so to add a tab it's I think that's a forward slash or is it a backslash maybe backslash and a T so that tells the computer to print a tab so I'm gonna go ahead and compile it I'm gonna go ahead and run it and you can see now there's a tab between each of these. Now, depending on your computer setup, this tab might be a little bit smaller, it might be a little bit bigger. It's, I think it's a computer setting. I don't really know much about it, but it lets us line up our, our numbers in nice, neat columns. Okay. Now, number two is a different type of problem, but similar. So it says create a loop to print the sum, keyword there, sum of the numbers 1 to 10 inclusive. Now notice it says 1 to 10 inclusive. This is the same loop issue or loop problem as we had in the first example. So I already know how to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this because I don't really like typing again. And I'm going to take that out because it's a different problem. So see where it says create a loop to print the sum of the numbers 1 to 10 inclusive. So because I'm printing a sum, I need to make a variable to hold that information. So I'm going to say int sum equals 0. Because when I start, the sum is going to be 0. So it says the sum of the numbers 1 to 10 inclusive. So what I'm going to do inside the loop, I'm going to say sum plus equals i. And I'm going to do system, system dot out dot print ln. And I'm going to print i oops, plus I'm going to do T again, do a tab, plus sum. So let's compile that and run it. And here we go. So 
we got 1 because 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. I did this on the board the other day, and my student's like, no, that's not right. You can't count. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're right. I can't count. Anyway, so 10 plus 5 is 15, and so on and so forth. And the sum up to 10 is 55. Okay. So we, again, we started at 1. We ended at 10. And 10 was inclusive. So notice here, I'm using another variable to hold the sum. So I need two pieces of information. I need my iterator, i, and I need my variable sum to hold that information and to keep changing along with the iterator. All right, now, the next one is a slightly different problem. So it says create a loop to print the even numbers only from 1 to 20 inclusive. Okay, so I've got my starting point, I've got my ending point, I've got my increment. So let's go ahead and do, the, do that. So for int i equals 1, because it says to start at 1, not 0. And while i is less than or equal to 20, i plus plus. So no matter what else we do, this is the structure of our loop. Okay. Starting at 1, we're going to 20, and 20 is inclusive. That's why I have the equal sign here. Okay. If it was less than 20, it would stop at 19. Less than or equal 20 stops at 20. Less than, oops, cancel, sorry, I don't want to enable Siri. Less than 21 will stop at 20. Okay. Again, this is a very common little gotcha uh, even though they'll, they'll do this on the AP quiz questions and because they think it makes you a better programmer, apparently. Um, so create and print only even numbers. Now here's the question. How do I determine if a number is even? Now some, some people would say, okay, well, if I just change this to a 2 and I do i plus equals 2, this will give me the correct answer. Okay. Uh, but I don't want you to do that for this one. I want to start at 1. I want to go to 20 because what we're doing is we're learning to use conditions to determine what we do inside the loop. So it says print only even numbers. So I have to determine if, determining, I always do that, if the number is even. To do that, if I percent 2 equals equals 0. So percent is called the modulus, and what it does is gives you the remainder. So for example, 1 divided by 2 is 0 with 1 left over. 2 divided by 2 is 1 with 0 left over, so it's even. 3, or sorry, 3 divided by 2 is 1 with 1 left over. 4 divided by 2 is 2 with 0 left over, so that's how that works. So if it's even, print ln, uh, let's, let's print it across. Print, I should have specified that. i plus t plus, that's it. So we're only printing the even numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and compile that. And error, because I didn't follow my own rule about always adding that extra brace before filling it in. Okay. And... And again, some people will point out that in Java, if you only have one line of code, you don't need the braces. I strongly recommend putting those braces in. Um, it'll help you keep your code organized. And it, later, if you have to add some code in here and do something extra, it's a lot easier. I, I just think it's going to help you to keep your code organized. That would be my advice. So compile it, run it, and you can see here we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20 inclusive. Moving right along. Number four. Create a loop to print the sum of the even numbers from only from, should be only from, 1 to 20 inclusive. So this is clearly a combination of this problem and this problem. Now just a quick Java thing. I've already declared sum as an integer here. So I don't need to declare it again. But I do need to reset the value to 0, like that. 
Now, I've already got this code, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. It's the same basic problem. So print the sum of the even numbers only from 1 to 20 inclusive. So I'm going to do the same thing I did. If it's even, the only difference is that I'm counting from you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. And then if it's even, I add it to the sum, not dumb, sum plus equals i. And then I'm going to go ahead and print that plus the sum. So I reset the sum to 0. And I didn't put int there because I already did that way up here. And then it says only the even numbers. So I first I have to find out, is this number even? If it is, add it to the sum. And then I'm going to print that out. Again, notice how I didn't have to add these because I already had them from the previous question. I'm going to go ahead and run that. And you can see something has gone horribly wrong. <laughs> what did I do wrong there? Um, sum of the even numbers. Sum, of the even, sum plus equals i. It should be 2 plus 4 plus 6. And what did I do wrong there? Uh, let me go ahead and compile that and make sure I compiled it correctly. i percent equal 2, sum plus equals i. So let's do it without out. i. Oh, duh. I want to do print ln. That was printing horizontally. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And now I've got. 2, 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 18 is 20, etc., etc., down to 90 plus 20 is 110. Which is interesting because that's also, that's double 55. So that's kind of an interesting mathematical thing. I'm sure there's some mathematical explanation for that. Okay. Now, so that's that. So this, again, this was a combination of the previous two exercises. And this is why I say that for these exercises, do them in order uh, because they build on each other. Okay, number five, create a loop that prints the two times table from zero to 12. So this is zero times zero equals, or zero times two equals zero. Zero times one equals, sorry, zero, one times two equals two, two times two equals four, three times two equals six, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're iterating through here, we're starting at zero and we're ending at 12. So I'm going to do 4 int i equals 0. i is less than or equal to 12. And I'm going up by 1. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that down. And what it says is I want to print the two times table. So I'm going to do system dot, dot out dot print ln. Yeah, print ln. And I want to print i plus times, I use an x here, I can use an asterisk, doesn't matter, um, times 2 equals, plus, this is where it gets a little confusing, um, i times 2. Now what you might want to do here, you want to say int, you know, product, product is what's the result of a multiplication. So this makes it a little more clear, so product equals i times 2. And then here, I would just put product. Maybe that makes this one a little bit clearer. Okay. So we're printing the two times table from 0 to 12. So 0 to 12, up by 1. So 0 times 2 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And then we're just printing it out row by row. So let me go ahead and run that, or compile it, run it. And there is our two times table. 0 times 2 equals 0, 1 times 2 equals 2. And if you're having trouble figuring these types of things out, you want to look at the pattern. So I got a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way down to 12. And then this is the mathematical relationship here is this times 2 is 0. This times 2 is 2, etc., etc. Now, some of my clever students are like, well, couldn't I do 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10? No. You could do that and then divide to get this number, but usually we would be going the other way, especially since we're printing the two times table. Okay. Now, this last one's a little bit more difficult. Um, and what we're doing here is a little bit different. 
Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be printing one, you know, two, three, four, five, and then the next row will have, you know, one, let's see, two, sorry, this should be two, sorry, uh, two times two is four, three times two is six, uh, four times two is eight, and then five times ten, and then this will be three, and then we'll have three times two is six, three times three is nine, four times three is twelve, five times three is fifteen, and twelve by twelve. So this is an interesting challenge. It's a bit like this, but it's also a little bit different. This may be the first time you've done something called a nested loop, which is where we have a loop inside of a loop. So I'm still doing 12 and 12. Uh, so I'm going to do 4 int i equals 1. i is less than or equal than 12. i plus plus. And I'm going to go ahead and put my other brace in so I don't forget it. Okay. Now, I need a second loop. Again, this loop is also going from 1 to 12. And I'm going to use J. This is just kind of an old kind of programming habit, I think from I don't know, Pascal or something. Uh, it's something that's very common. I and J were often used as iterators. You'll, you'll see that as well in the um, AP stuff. So what I want to do is I'm going to do system dot out dot print, not print, print, not print line, but print. And I'm going to do I times J. And at the end of each row, I'm going to do system dot out dot print LN. I think I have to put quotes in there. I think this will do it. Let's try it. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, yeah, it did do it. <laughs> okay, but it doesn't look very good. Um, so we need to add uh, T. Just have to add that there. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile that and run it. And there we've got our times tables. Okay, because this is I i goes up to 12. This is i times j. So, so i is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 4 is 4. Okay, so i times j. So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. We go all the way through to 12. We come down. i is now 2. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6, etc., etc. And it goes all the way down to 12 times 12, which is 44. Pretty nifty. I wonder what happens if I add 0. I'm just kind of curious. I don't know if that's going to do what we want it to or not. Let's let's compile. I'm kind of curious about this one. Okay, it does basically the same thing. Because um, you got your zero row and you got your zero column. But I don't really think that helps our case at all. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back. And compile it. Make sure it's working. And there we go. Okay, again, this is a tough one, especially if you've never done this type of thing before. Uh, but I think up to number five, it should be fairly straightforward. This one, you got to do a little bit more thinking. And if you're one of my students, uh, we'll, we'll do more problems like this later. And uh, yeah, we'll go over that a bit more step by step. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, and keep on coding.